Most of this talk will uh, actually be a practical demonstration. I'll need to be sitting at the keyboard. So it'll either go really, really well or be a complete disaster. But in either way, it's going to be really entertaining for you lot, I hope. Um, so this is a great first conference, and thank you for inviting me. Um, and congratulations to the team for such a sort of professional uh, show that you've put on here. And long may it last. I hope that there are many more. Python, uh, Python conferences here. Um, so my name is Nicholas Tolovey, and uh, I'm a freelance Python developer from, from the UK. Um, my background, he said, uh, music. So uh, here's uh, the obligatory picture of me playing my instrument. I'm a tuba player. Um, I used to earn my living playing in orchestras and things. Um, but uh, I met my wife and wanted to get married, and musicians don't earn a lot of money. So what do musicians do when they don't earn money? They become teachers. So this is me on my first day as a school teacher with my form. Uh, I used to be a school teacher. And I'm very, still very passionate uh, about education, either, either still as a software developer. Um, and so I've been involved a lot in, in the programming education work in the UK that's been happening. And O'Reilly wanted me to write a book about this. So there's my <laughs> obligatory plug of my book there. Um, and interestingly, internationally, people seem to think that we're doing interesting things in the UK as well. So I wanted to sort of share a little bit about that. Um, and perhaps the most important thing, um, because we're at a PyCon, is that the is that the UK's Python community are, I guess, at the heart of a lot of the changes that are happening in, um, in the uh, UK uh, uh, programming and education uh, work that's going on. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to discuss how we as programmers can engage in, in this world of education. Um, and I'm going to start uh, with an assumption. Uh, I'll do some karaoke here for you. A good developer is always learning and re-evaluating in order to improve. Um, and this is a bit obvious, really, because in such a fast-moving industry, uh, things are changing all the time. I was talking to Corey this morning on, in the car, and we were talking about how this library changes because you know security and things like that, and you have to keep relearning and things. Um, so we, we have to learn. It's part of our job. Um, and I'd like to ask, is there anyone here who's so talented that they, they don't need to learn anything from, from anyone? You'd need to be uh, 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 rather an arrogant individual if you thought that yourself. And, uh, and if you are thinking that, then I suggest you're fooling yourself, really. Um, and uh, teaching and learning are, I guess, at the heart of, of what we do. We'll, we'll see that in, in a minute. Um, and uh, I quite like uh, the quote from Socrates, uh, where he says, uh, wisest are they that know they know nothing. Um, because you know you have to be quite humble uh, when you're learning as well. Um, so, talking of humbleness, here's a quote from me. <laughs> 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 this was done in a discussion uh, on Facebook with some teaching colleagues. Uh, I'll read it out again for the sake of, uh, of people who can't see the slides. Uh, asking what sort of education and learning our community supports is how we decide what sort of community we become. For it is through education and learning that we engage with our future colleagues, friends, and supporters. And this is essential for a community like Python, uh, which is a free and open community. Um, but education isn't just about personal development. Uh, its effects are far wider and sort of long term. And you might be asking, well, uh, what has this got to do with me? So uh, this picture uh, is of Ravi, uh, who's a colleague of mine, uh, explaining something in the London Python Code Dojo. Um, and uh, if you already know how to write code, you might think, well, education, it's not really of any interest to me. Um, but if you're good, you'll know that uh, development involves learning. And uh, when you're in a position of responsibility, like Ravi obviously is in this non-staged photograph, uh, teaching others how to write code and how your software works is an important aspect of what we do. This is why we do code reviews. This is why we pair program. Um, and when you pair program, you have to interact. And that involves teaching and explaining and things like that. This is an important skill that we need to have as developers. Um, so to be a programmer is to be um, a teacher and a learner. Um, but this doesn't just apply in, uh, in a professional context to us as, as jobbing uh, Pythonistas, as it were. Um, this is something that we can do to engage our future community. In, in 10 years' time, uh, when I'm a lot older and I come along to PyCon Slovakia, um, the kids that are 11 or 12 years old now will be the ones on this stage now. And, and what, are the, uh, what can we do to help them uh, become members of our community? So uh, it's important to engage with children, I believe. 
Um, it might be a bit frightening when you stand up and there's 30 11-year-olds looking at you. It's quite disconcerting, I can tell you. Um, but to describe programming to children indicates that you know your craft at a deep level. Why is this? Well, you appreciate what to leave in and how much to leave out. Um, and you make, uh, and this demonstrates sort of the clear mental models uh, that, that you might have, so you know how to analogize uh, and summarize the, the knowledge that you have. Um, and being able to explain yourself in simple uh, and easy to understand library is also dem a demonstration of your own clarity of thought. Um, I don't know about you guys, but uh, sometimes when I sit down with colleagues and there's a really gnarly problem, and you end up sort of going around the block because you just can't explain it in a simple way. But actually trying to work out how you might explain it helps you shed light on what that particular problem is. Um, and also, just working in this way with, with young members of our community is, is a sign of moral and professional value. Um, it's an unambiguously good thing to do, really. Um, so I'll ask the question, how or what should we teach? Well, um, perhaps uh, you might be able to answer this, but uh, in, 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 in Slovakia, I'm not quite sure what your computing curriculum is like, but in the UK until about, oh, I don't know, three or four years ago, it was essentially a little bit like this. Uh, it was a glorified Microsoft Office uh, program of study, really. Um, and, uh, and, there was <laughs> and there was no actual programming on the curriculum. Uh, and often it was delivered by uh, teachers who had no computing um, expertise because they were business studies teachers. Okay. Um, and also teachers, I don't know what it's like in Slovakia, but they get a bit of a bad rep in, in the UK. Here's George Bernard Shaw, those who can do, those who can't teach, you can't really get much worse of indication of what it's like to be a teacher than, than George Bernard Shaw. Um, but teachers are the single most important aspect of delivering the sort of change that we want to encourage children to program. Um, so what do teachers make? Well, they kind of make a difference. And teaching, Teaching is the one profession that creates all the other professions. And uh, it's a calling, because you're certainly not doing it for, for the kudos or the money. Anyway, you're not in the UK, you're not. Um, and also, as a teacher, it was, teaching is the hardest job I've ever done. So you know, when the servers are melting, and the clients are on the phone, and everything like that uh, as a programmer, that's nothing compared to some of the situations I had to face as a teacher. Um, so at PyCon UK, we welcome teachers to our community. Here's a whole bunch of teachers that turned up uh, in 2012. Um, and we remove as many bureaucratic barriers as we can to them coming. So we actually more or less make it free for them to attend. Um, uh, and we connect them with developers as well. Uh, but education isn't just about teachers. Uh, we also run a children's track as well at PyCon UK. Um, and like I said, kids are our future colleagues, friends, leaders, and collaborators, and we should welcome and help them and cherish them and all that sort of stuff, and, and embrace their enthusiasm, because when you walk into a room full of 100 children, um, it's sort of coming out the walls, the enthusiasm, as it were. Um, so we, again, we make it ridiculously cheap for, for kids to turn up, 100 or so. Uh, it's high energy, lots of fun, and, and we get outcomes like, like what you can see on the screen. So there, there are going to be three children here. Um, there's Amelia. Uh, and then the little boy is William, who's my son. He was about five at the time. And, and the chap whose mouth you can just see appearing out of the top corner of the photograph is my uh, older son, Sam. Um, and they're, they're working on a Python problem. They're trying to program Minecraft on a Raspberry Pi using a Python API. And Amelia's looking a bit uh, worried about this. And obviously, something's gone a little bit wrong here. Sam's moved on to the sort of scene, and he's, he's having a look as well. Hmm, it's not worked quite how they were expecting this code to work. Ah, but Big Brother, he spotted a, a problem here, and he's helping them out. And um, ah, they, they, they've, clicked, they've pressed F5 again. And ah, no, there's no syntax error anymore. Is it going to run? Is it going to run? Yes, it's going to run. We have all felt that sort of a feeling as, a, as software developers. OK? So kids at PyCons are good. So the future. Um, Inventing the future uh, with, our, with our children. Alan Kay says the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Uh, and in the UK, lots of groups are starting to realize this. So um, one thing for certain is that computing will be a huge part of our future. So it's important that people are confident uh, to connect with, with this medium and, and they're, they're good digital creators. 
So this was my first computer. Uh, this is the slide that, that you particularly wanted to see uh, of the BBC Micro. Um, uh, this was given to all schools in the 1980s. My dad was a head teacher. He came, one, he came home one evening with this computer, and within about five minutes, my brother and I had uh, managed to take this off him and plug it in and started playing. And I remember my first program. It was 10 CLS. Uh, this was a basic machine, so that was a clear screen. Uh, 20 print. Quotes, Andrew is an idiot. Andrew uh, is my brother. Uh, 30, what was line 30? Go to, go to, go to 20. <laughs> so Andrew is an idiot. It's all at the screen. Okay, fist, 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 fight. My, my brother as well actually is a, is a programmer as well. Okay, uh, but Dave Allen, the, the, the producer for the BBC Micro, he said, the aim was to dem democratise computing. We didn't want people to be controlled by computing, but to control it. And I think that's a very laudable aim that we're aiming for. So fast forward to, uh, to today, and the BBC um, have created a moonshot uh, project called the Microbit. Uh, and in two weeks' time, I can't believe it's that close, in two weeks' time, one million small programmable devices are going to be given to the UK's 11 and 12 year olds. Every single one of these kids is going to get one of these small programmable devices. Um, it's being created by 20 or more partners. The Python Software Foundation, of which I'm representing uh, in this, uh, is one of them. And uh, it runs Python. So this is where the fun begins. <laughs> Um, right, so. This is a micro bit. Uh, let me just explain what's on the board. You have two buttons on the front here. You have a 5x5 five five LED matrix. It's even got a hairdo. And across the bottom, where the teeth should be, are uh, I.O. pins. And the way they've been created, as you can see, if you know what a makey-makey is, you'll, you'll understand. Uh, you can attach crocodile clips. Um, or you can plug it into an edge connector like this and then break out into a breadboard. Okay. On the back, all the parts, all the components are labelled. Um, so there's a compass and an accelerometer and things like that. Uh, you can stick batteries in here, a reset button. Obviously, USB goes in here. So let's get rid of my ugly mug. Uh, actually, let's not. So we have an editor here. OK. Um, and uh, I guess the first thing I should do is connect to the device, which is what I've just done. Um, so this is a REPL, a Python 3 REPL, running on this device. Um, Damien George, the creator of MicroPython, which is the version of Python that we use, um, has created a full re-implementation of Python 3 um, for microcontrollers. Um, so everything Python 3 can do, you can do on here. It comes without the standard library, but we've created a module called Microbit that allows you to interact with the hardware. So, in theory, I can do things like that, and it's evaluated and it returns, but I can also do, it's really disconcerting typing here when actually the thing's up there. So I'm just going to change my screen so I'm mirroring um, displays, pop, 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 mirror. Is that going to work? I'm not sure. Mirror. No, that's not going to work. Oh, well. OK, I'm going to get a stiff neck then. So <laughs> I can type display dot scroll. Hello, world. And then if I'm quick, hello, world. There we go. Um, so not only can I use the REPL, to evaluate commands and things. I can create uh, code up here and um, 
Well, let's see. Uh, I can just flash the device. So you can see it flashing here, showing you that the, that the thing's being flashed. And it's a very sad micro bit. But if, let's see if I can do this right, if I tickle it, <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. It'll smile for me, OK? So these are fun little programs written in Python that, that kids, kids are going to enjoy. Um, uh, what else does it do? Uh, so we have uh, Magic 8, uh, very simple piece of software. Um, we've got a list of answers here, and that's essentially the program um, that we have. Uh, you might be wondering, I can't see that at the back. Uh, we know this uh, because um, teachers tell this all the time. So we've created the editor so that you can make sure that the people at the back can see the code that's there as well. And also, um, sometimes people find it easy with projectors to, to have a dark high, uh, uh, a, a dark theme. Um, so if I flash this onto the device, we have a Magic 8 Ball. So the way a Magic 8 Ball works Here's the magic eight ball, and you ask it a question, and you shake it, and then it gives you an answer. So my question is going to be, is this the most awesome PyCon so far in 2016? You may rely on it. Awesome. It is the most. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, I think, uh, like I said, in two weeks' time, a million children are going to go and get one of these devices. Uh, let me get rid of cheese. Um, but let me show you what else uh, they can do. Um, they can, if I focus on here. So this is the BBC's website, microbit.co.uk. If you go there, you'll find out all sorts of details. Uh, there is a web-based editor, Python editor, built into this as well. Uh, so you download the hex file and you copy it over to the device. And so kids don't have to use the editor if they don't want to. Um, when we were, uh, we, we only had essentially one device for most of the development of this. Uh, but the BBC gave us about five devices. And we tried to work out what could we do to engage the Python community um, and, and, and create some resources for the kids to use. So we sent them on a world tour. Um, and they went everywhere. Um, so a couple to the US, uh, one to the South Pole, um, New Zealand, and so on and so forth. And uh, if we have a look, uh, people would supply blog posts with various different things that they've been up to. So Radomir from Poland, who's currently in Switzerland, uh, did some robots. I'd like to uh, attempt to play in a conference on conference Wi-Fi a YouTube video for you. Let's see how that goes. Um, but this is Radomir's Bob robot. This is brilliant, I think. I think it's rather cute in an all humans must die sort of a robotic way. Um, but the point is, is that Radomir has provided all the source code and the plans and the things that uh, a, a teacher at school can use to then take this class of 11 and 12 year olds. They can all bring their device, plug the device into the robot, or make their own robot if they're in, if they're in a technology lesson. Um, and you know, this is inspiring kids to program. Um, so. I'm running out of time, I think. Uh, five minutes, thank you. Um, so the documentation is on Read the Docs. OK, uh, that includes tutorials and, uh, and everything. Um, there are also lesson plans as well. Um, so uh, your homework. I used to be a teacher, so you thought you could get away with this, but no. Um, 
If you're asking, well, how could I get involved in this? Uh, what could I do? Um, well, uh, obviously, everything to do with the micro bit is going to be open sourced. So all the hardware schematics and information for how to recreate one of these devices is going to be released under an open license. So uh, anybody without having to ask permission will be able to just manufacture these, uh, obviously pending the appropriate uh, certifications and things. Um, but you'll be able to see how it works. Uh, all the source code is definitely uh, open source. So. Um, you can get involved and you can help and you can teach. Um, wouldn't it be lovely if there was an education track at next year's uh, PyCon Slovakia? And uh, what's stopping Slovakia from having a micro bit as well? Um, everything's there for you to take this and make it your own. Um, so that's when your homework's due. <laughs> uh, I think that's it then. I have questions? Okay, uh, let's move to the questions. The most voted one is, are there any plans to make the device available commercially? Ah. So, um, I've come prepared. So these are frequently questioned answers. Um, so, when and where will, uh, will the device be? It'll be vi you can, you'll be able to uh, order it, just like you do with the Raspberry Pi, uh, via mail order over the summer. Um, the kids are going to get it first, and then I think June, July time, uh, you'll be able to order them from places like Farnell online. Okay, so the next question. What other environments and tools do you use when teaching programming in Python? So, uh, the Raspberry Pi. Uh, hands up if you uh, know or have heard of Raspberry Pi. That's pretty much everybody. Okay, so Raspberry Pi is another UK-based uh, teaching uh, success story. Uh, so Raspberry Pi is very popular in schools um, and uh, teachers in the UK anyway seem to love Python. So um, there, there's lots of, what I'm saying is there's lots of grassroots teachers creating resources um, and things uh, that, to, to, to teach Python. Okay, uh, next one. Are there any extensions for microbit? We already seen one, I think. Um, so, uh, yes. So you, you will be able to get hardware like, like this, uh, so a breakout sort of board. Um, I've seen, no, I'm not going to tell you about that because that might be secret. Um, <laughs> there are plans afoot, <laughs> is all I can say. <laughs> so uh, there will be something equivalent of being able to stack uh, devices on the bottom. Somebody's designing something so you can just screw more bits and bobs on and each, a bit like a shield on an Arduino, you just sort of add more capabilities. Okay, so the last one, the most interesting question. Do you want to play for us? In a musical sense. Probably. Uh, unfortunately, as you saw, um, I'm a tuba player, and getting a tuba on an aeroplane is, uh, well, <laughs> it's not a nice thing to do, so uh, alas, no. If there was a piano I'd play for you, but there isn't. <laughs>